On the MidwestSports.net YouTube channel, hi, I'm Joey McWilliams, and welcome back to the Summit. Our guest today is James Lex from the Champion Sports Network, and James, it's a privilege to get to have you here on the MidwestSports.net channel. Uh, we've had an opportunity to visit a number of times, and uh, well, you know, I got to be on your show earlier this year, back in the yeah. summertime when it was, oh my goodness, it was warmer than what it, it is right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of warm here in Dallas right now. It's just a little bit rainy, but uh, it's pretty cold up where you're at in uh, in Oklahoma. Definitely it is. Cold and, and uh, wet and rainy. That's okay. We haven't gotten anything frozen. That's what my kids really wanted was something that would uh, actually stick to the ground just a little bit and, and keep them Make out of school. Balls and throw it at you. <laughs> <laughs> and throw them at me, too. Well, listen, Champion Sports Network, and we've talked about here this here on the MidwestSports.net channel before, but I, I want to to preview that again and, and talk a little bit more about what you all are doing. Now, you're based in Waxahachie, Texas. Of course, you talked about Dallas. It's right there in, in that Metroplex area. Right. And you actually get to work firsthand with the Southwestern Assemblies of God University Lions. Talk about what you're doing there with the Champion Sports Network. Sure. So I work predominantly with, as you mentioned, Southwestern Assemblies of God University, helping to develop some of their programming for their sports network. And as I was developing that, I started finding these great stories. I started finding the teams and the athletes were top notch. And a lot of the mis a lot of the NAI thoughts I had were misconceptions. And I started realizing this like, NAI is completely different than what I thought it was coming in. And I realized the stories had to be told. And so I'm helping launch the Champion Sports Network. Champion Sports Network is aiming to revolutionize small college sports media, taking a national approach as opposed to maybe just a team or a conference, looking at the whole nation of teams and getting to examine the, I mean, the, the phenomenal players and athletes that the NAI has. Uh, I mean, these, these are athletes that are not far from being NCAA D1, especially in, say, men's basketball. I mean, you've got right. guys that are uh, that some of them have were playing there, and they came down to the NAI to get some more playing time. I mean, you have D1 players, and when I started seeing that, I said, wow, this is exciting. Small colleges, the fans are passionate and educated. They care about their school. And uh, just from that, I, I said, hey, we have to do something about it. So help to create a champion sports network. And so we started in the fall doing some promotion and some shows with, with regards to football. And in the next few weeks, we're going to be doing some basketball coverage heading into March Madness. Now, you all had a lot of football coverage, specifically as you got into the playoffs, as you and John right. Cookman got to host a program, and you went through uh, all rounds and all levels of the playoffs yeah. going up to the championship game. And, and Morningside, again, the championship, the Mustangs with 29 consecutive yeah. wins. But, but you guys had some great football coverage. Yes, and boy, it was such a such a privilege to get to cover NAI football. You know, a 16-team tournament was the first time that we had aimed to cover something that large. And getting to see a team like Morningside, and then they, you know, they defeated Marion in the championship game. Those two teams go through the playoffs. Uh, what a it was a lot of fun to getting yeah. to follow NAI football, and uh, we'll be doing some more coverage here in fall 2020. Teams that I felt like would be on a collision course all the way along too, as they just progress through the season, and it's it's just as as we stay with that just for a moment longer it's tough to think that Morningside won't be the number one team in the country heading into the fall yet again and when we talk about these things in the summer we'll be talking about the Mustangs again right. yeah they'll definitely be number one in the preseason poll I don't see how they're not going to be with uh, Dolinchek returning at quarterback but uh, you know the real question for me is who's going to be number two uh, I think <laughs> Morningside's got number one but who's going to be at that second spot in the preseason poll and the poll matters in the NAI because your poll standing affects where you end up come playoff time because if you start at the top and you lose one or two games you may still be in the playoffs but if you start at 10 11 and you lose two games you're probably on the outside looking in so it's going to matter who's going to start uh, right there behind Morningside atop that poll come uh, I believe in July as that first poll opens up oh you're exactly right and and James, even to take it a step further, if you're a quality team and you're not in that top 25 in the preseason, right. it's it's tough to work yeah. your way into that spot from being on the outside looking in. It's a long way from 25 to say 15 to get in that <laughs> that top six to get. I mean, it's not necessarily top 16, but you you want to be in that top 16 to get in the 16 team tournament. But it's a long ways from 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 25 or right below even to get to 15. So yeah, well, it'll be it's going to be interesting to see uh, who who moves up. Who moves up and around there? Uh, I expect Lindsey Wilson to kind of stay there at the top. But Marion, we'll see if they get to kind of come into the preseason at number two. All right. We've well, talked about uh, the fact that you all are covering basketball now as we're into not just the winter sports. Spring sports are right around the corner. Baseball yeah. and softball games, I know in, in, for some colleges, will actually start within the month of January. So talk right. about some of your, your winter and spring coverage with basketball. 
So we're going to begin covering predominantly, again, men's and women's basketball. Um, well, we're going to focus on national coverage, but since we are located here in uh, Texas, you know, we'll be covering a lot of the, the Sooner Athletic, maybe American Midwest Conference, and some of the teams here centrally located, and obviously the GPAC. Um, obviously, being here at SAGU, I've gotten to see a few of the teams already. Namely, uh, Oklahoma City came here uh, last week, and we got to see their men's and women's team play, and it was a, it was truly a privilege. Two good teams on both uh, men's and women's side, and uh, wow. Uh, Oklahoma City on the women's side, they have reloaded again and looks <laughs> like they're they're contending for another national championship. I mean, they were balanced. Uh, they spread the ball around. Um, Lockhart was just, she was just picking apart uh, the, the Lady Lions in that game. And I don't know who's going to beat them. I really don't. I mean, I know they're number two and I mean, there, there are other good teams out there, but they're balanced and they can go, they can go to the bench and, and still get points and not have to, um, not have to worry about a team getting, you know, getting a little run on them while the starters are on the bench. So I, I'm expecting Oklahoma City to go pretty deep in the in the tournament come March. You know, I'm glad you talked about that because I did want to get to preview at least a little bit uh, of our coverage here on MidwestSports.net. Saturday, the flagship show for MidwestSports.net, Midwest Sports Saturday, will be on the campus of OCU up in Oklahoma City, and it will be a big doubleheader between Mid-America Christian University and Oklahoma City University. And James, one of the things I think is kind of cool about this, you're going to get high up the national rankings in both games because with OCU, right. you're talking about the women's team, number two in the country, right, right behind the Masters from California with Mid-America Christians men's team. You're talking about right. the number two team in the country uh, right behind Georgetown. And so, I mean, this is going to be – and it's a good doubleheader anyway. The north part of Oklahoma City, south Oklahoma City with Mid-America Christian maybe creeping into to more Oklahoma right there. But it should be a good matchup. And, and I know you saw OCU play. Southwestern Assemblies of God, SAGU, got to take on Mid-America Christian this past week, and, and that was a big, tight battle for the men to play as well. It was, and what a big game that was even in the NAI. You know, if you go back in NAI uh, men's basketball and their championship history, I mean, it's a tough tournament. You know, the yes. football side, you have 16 teams getting in into football, and you go, wow, that's, that, is, that is so hard to win that the championship because you have so many teams 90 or so in NAI going for that one championship. Well, in the NAI, they have 32. This will be the last year because next year it'll go to 64 teams in the tournament going for one championship. So it's only going to get crazier. But what, what makes the NAI so unique is that you have to win five games in six days. Yes. Uh, it is a tough tournament. Whereas in NCAA, they only do two games a weekend, take a week off, come back, <laughs> you know, get rested up another two games, take a week off. And, that's not the way the NAI works. You, it's just every day, next game, next game. So by the time you get to the championship game, you know it's the team that can can has the durability to make it. Well, the Sooner Athletic Conference since the year 2000, they've been in 11 of them and, and made it. And it's not necessarily the top team in the conference. So with that depth in mind, uh, they haven't had a team in the championship. And this is in the championship game, by the way, right. not even just getting in that game. And sometimes you'll have two teams make it um, from the Sooner. So mm -hmm. there's a long basketball history. This year's very interesting because I think we're going to see another team get back in the national championship. You mentioned MacU, number two in the country. Uh, they played very well against Sagu, who's also ranked. You know, Sooner has four teams. You have MacU at number two. Uh, you have John Brown at 10. You have Texas Wesleyan just jumped up to 19. Sagu at 22. And on the outside looking in is Wayland Baptist, who has a player in J.J. Cover who put up 100 points a few weeks ago. <laughs> so you have this, this depth. Just yes. in that's, Those are just the top five teams. I mean, the teams at 8-9 are also very good. They're just having to play these elite, this elite talent uh, from the Sooner. And, you know, when people think of basketball, they tend to think, you know, maybe North Carolina, Duke, you know, that North Carolina. In the NAI, there is a, a, a talent pool uh, in this Midwest area, in Oklahoma. Uh, there's a lot of good teams in Oklahoma, Oklahoma City, uh, you know, obviously MacU, um, and getting to see, uh, so MacU, they'll be coming in at the end of the season against SAGU in the final game, it's gonna, which could be a huge mashup uh, as for seeding for the national tournament. Um, so that's going to be an exciting game. But let's go back to MacU. They just played SAGU this weekend, a four-point win for them, but SAGU was missing their second-best player for that game. He was out most of the game with a concussion. So it impacted that game. Nick Mason for SAGU put up 36 points. Um, obviously for MacU, they, they, they're going to they're score. I mean, they scored 90, but, you know, they that's, can be beat. And so and it, it will be interesting when they play John Brown and some of the yes. other teams if, if they're going to be able to hold up. Well, it is a pretty deep team, though. The Evangels do have a pretty deep team, but you're right, having the advantage of you know maybe one man down from Sagu yeah. going in and, and playing that game 
at Mid America Christian. Definitely a home court advantage right there, and and uh, Coach right. Josh Gamblin's team took advantage of it. Uh, had the lead early, and then had to hang on for it. So that that's a big one. And, and a and, win is a win. And a, mean, win, a win is a win, is a win. exactly. <laughs> and yeah, you know, you so. everything you talked about too about the, the the men's basketball and the and the history of the NAI and and especially the history within the Sooner Athletic Conference and and uh, you go back even to some of these teams at least on my side of the Red River, James. So work with me on that. You go back to the yeah. old OI. I see too, uh, and uh, the Oklahoma, yeah. Intercolle- Oklahoma ad- Athletic, Con- or excuse me, Intercollegiate Conference and District Nine. Uh, yeah, Oklahoma Baptist uh, historically there year in and year out, yeah. and so yes, there there is a lot of quality basketball to be played. And having said all that, you didn't even mention the women and how much history I there is no. within these programs here. And another, oh, for, you know, absolutely. former NAI school, seven national championships from Southern Nazarene. I mean, you know, that that was a dominant yeah. program in women's <laughs> basketball when they were in the NAI. So, yes, it is really, really good. And, and you can't say enough, I don't think, about what takes place in Kansas City uh, in the fact that, that those games are played within a week span. 32 teams, yeah. getting it all done within a week span. It's it's just a, it's it's fun to watch as I've watched it online. It have never been there personally. I will. I will someday, and I believe it'll be someday soon. But uh, to get to do that, James, what a privilege it is then for you, I'm sure, to get to be a part of some of these things and to watch now as as the Champion Sports Network is growing and it will continue to grow and and, uh, to reach out and do some of these big things. So how do people find you? So you can to find follow us on uh, social media. Go to championsports.network, and there you can find us on Facebook. We're active on Twitter, and obviously YouTube is where you can catch all the various shows and programming we have uh, for national NAI coverage. All right, and YouTube. Obviously, you have a YouTube channel as well, and you have uh, you've had a number of videos that have been posted here within the past few months, specifically a lot of football coverage. Right. So uh, with those playoffs coming in, uh, my colleague Don Cookman and I, you know, every week we're breaking down the games, looking at, uh, you know, the, the stats, look, watching the games, going through who we thought would win the next week. And, uh, and, you know, it was great. You know, the NAI fans are so passionate. They started getting in the fence and, and letting us know if they agreed with us or if they didn't agree <laughs> with us. And, uh, and that's always fun. You know, that's what makes sports great is, uh, is the fan experience and getting to interact with uh, the personalities that are on uh, various shows and programming. All right, this is James Lex with the Champion Sports Network, also working with the Sagu Sports Network as well in Waxhatchee, Texas. And uh, the Lions having a pretty good season. You all may be talking about that home team as you talk about some of that coverage a little bit later on. James, thank you so much for being with me today on the Summit. And uh, I just encourage everyone, please like and share this video. Please do subscribe to this YouTube channel. It's the Midwest Sportsnet YouTube channel. So for James Lex, I'm Joey McWilliams. Thanks again for watching. God bless you. Have a great day.